The first thing is, of course, uh, everybody's got to have a patch. Make sure your name is spelled correctly. That's very important. And uh, there we are walking out. Uh, I guess this was our second attempt on December 9th, and we were very optimistic, even though we had some pessimistic weather forecasts that we were going to go. Strapping in is not a trivial thing, and it was really nice to have some support to get us in there so that we could spend the next three hours lying on our backs. <laughs> Here is uh, Sonny Williams, who uh, is worth a mention or two, because uh, we went to, to take her up to the space station and bring Thomas Ryder home. There's not much I could say about that whole thing, but wow. And there we are finally getting on orbit as uh, we're separating from the external tank. And uh, boy, what a feeling it was, especially since we had five people that had not flown before to get them up on orbit. That was just a, a real fantastic feeling. And after a night of sleep, a hard night of sleep as you can imagine to take after an ascent like that, we had to inspect the shuttle's thermal protection system for any damage that might have been caused during ascent. And fortunately, there wasn't any significant damage. And here we are going past the hatch. I think Jenny's going to wave at us. We were looking for damage that might have been caused by falling ice or foam. And then rendezvous on flight day three. Here we are viewed from the station. And then 600 feet below the station, we did this somersault called the, uh, the rendezvous pitch maneuver so that the station crew could photograph the bottom of the shuttle that we couldn't have seen with the uh, space shuttle's robot arm. This maneuver is sped up, as you can imagine, but it's still very impressive while you're doing it. <laughs> and there, this is a beautiful view of the shuttle. There are the three main engines that took us most of the way to orbit. And now we're ready for the rendezvous itself, the uh, final approach. There we are climbing up in front of station with the uh, west coast of South America breezing by below us. And soon you'll see our view of the station through the centerline camera as we approached. A magnificent sight the station was. And here we are viewed from the station. Coming in at night, the payload bay is illuminated there. And on the right through the window, you can see space station just touching. We have to touch it three centimeters a second, just over an inch a second, which is quite a challenge after climbing at 17,000 miles an hour towards station. Then we open the hatch and go inside to greet our hosts for eight days aboard the International Space Station. Here we are, Alexander Caleri and Thomas Reiter saying hello to us, and in the background, uh, Michael Lopez Alegria. And of course, you can imagine the size of the smiles. We've been waiting for this, some of us, for eight or 10 years. And now we'd just like to take you on a little tour of the space shuttle. We're on the aft flight deck as we head down to the mid deck. What you'll be able to see is our, our lovely MS-2, Mr. Beamer, exercising on the ergometer, which to normal people is just a bicycle. There's a lot of stowage that we had underneath there. As we continue going straight back or aft of the shuttle, we're slowly passing through the external airlock. We have some very large baggage there. A lot of these pieces of hardware we actually had to transfer over to station. As we continue back further aft, we are now into space hab. And you can see it's a little messy back there because uh, it's not a lot of room and I basically had to play a game of Tetris with all the bags. 
You see, it's early morning because that's Nick's sleeping bag. He hadn't folded it up. And if you look at me, you see I haven't combed my hair. So you, you, you know this was not a planned thing for me. <laughs> Continue along. We are now going through the hatch, which will lead us to the International Space Station. We're actually first going to the laboratory module. And the first thing you'll see is more bags of transfer. There was plenty of transfer on this flight. If you look closely, you also see Stunny working on the robotic workstation. As we go into the PM or the node, you'll see more and more stowage, and you see LA upside down. He's actually working on the computer. We're going to take a quick left turn and now pin you into the airlock. This is where Krister, Sunny, and Beamer, and along with Billy O, got ready for all the different EVAs or the spacewalks. This port here is really important because you see all the bags and there's like a little s inclination. So as you come flying through there, it's really fun. It's like going down the slide. We're continuing back and we are now in the service module and all the containers that you're looking at on the floor are basically food containers. Continue our way back aft. We are now getting into the uh, FGB, I'm sorry, we were FGB, now we're going into the service module. And you see Misha down there working on uh, one of his apparatus, and you see that, uh, I think Krister was taking this, he's being met with Thomas, one of the high-def camera. We didn't have any time for luxury after taking a quick tour. Nick and Roman actually grappled the P5 truss, better known as Puny. They took it out of the bay, and they positioned it on the forward left side of the shuttle. And as you see their arm in motion, above it you'll see the space station arm coming in. Sunny is now going in to grapple the P-5. At one point, both arms were grappled. Once we had firm hold of it, we let go, and we had it. As we said before, we did four spacewalks on this flight, and uh, we had a lot of help getting into the hatch and getting ourselves ready. You can see Bill and L.A. there. And they'd actually close us off into the crew lock before each spacewalk, and then out we go on EVA-1, or the first spacewalk. The first spacewalk, the main objective was to install P-5. You can see us coming out here. And then we go all the way out to the end of P-4, approximately um, 100 or so feet. And then once we get out there, as you can see us all the way on the left, they move P-5 up into position to be installed on P-4. You have Joni and Sonny inside doing all the robotics work for this. And what they did was they brought it to about 20 centimeters, within about 20 centimeters of P4, and then let us take off the launch locks and then actually uh, moved it in closer. And you can see it now going into the soft dock mechanism. After that, you can see us actually, this is just before we installed it. We actually had to remove those launch locks. And then after we got it together, we tightened them down. You can see here how far out we are. We're actually inboard of where we put on P5. And then we had a little work to do outside on the other side of the, uh, of the truss. On the starboard side, we actually replaced a camera, the television camera group. Here you see uh, Christopher taking a picture of me with the cam camera. And then on the second spacewalk, we started our massive rewiring exercise. Like I said before, our um, main objective here was to actually take the uh, space station off its temporary power system and move it to its permanent system. And basically, in layman's terms, what we were doing, we, were, so we turned off half of the station, we unplugged it from P6, or the power truss that was vertical, and then plugged it into the main truss. Then we powered, down, powered that side up, powered the other side down, and then we unplugged those two channels from P6, and then we plugged it into the main truss. And this was all orchestrated by Billy O. He was our intervehicular crew member. Basically, he was the brains, and we were just uh, <laughs> moving things around out there. You can see there's a lot of connectors, several dozen connectors that we had to do here. And also, to get to some of them, we actually had to move these two carts, which are the uh, career equipment and translation aid carts, or the CETA carts. You can see right here is um, the CETA cart being held by Christopher Fuglesang. And then he moves it from one side of the uh, mobile base system to the other, and then connects the two CETA cards. Okay. And this is actually a picture of the guys inside that I'm taking here, the three, and you can see that picture in our uh, greatest hits somewhere else. 
And then EVA3 was more of the same connector stuff, but we also had to move some service module debris panels. This is actually sunny on the end of the arm coming into the back of the payload bay. I'm already there loosening the bolts so she can take the uh, service module debris panels and put them on something we called a Christmas tree, which was actually a support structure form. And then off she goes on the arm, fly, and uh, Nick is actually flying her up and around the lab and all the way to the side of the station where there was a receptacle for the Christmas tree to go. And you can see that in this part. Then I uh, translate down there to help her out and throw the lock, and that was it. On flight day five, we had a little short um, schedule to retract solar ray. It was supposed to go for an hour. <laughs> uh, well, it turned out it was a multi-day task. And uh, here is one of the examples of how it looked after the first day. It didn't look pretty, but at least there was enough inside that the Sarge could start to turn. On EVA 3, Sonny and uh, Beamer were kind of uh, told to go up and shake the arrays a little bit, and here you have a nice view. 44 pounds, yeah. <laughs> it uh, helped a little bit. The array got somewhat further in, but uh, it was still not enough. And towards the end of the EVA-3, we got uh, the uh, news that we will have a new uh, EVA-4. Everyone was happy on board except the commander for the shuttle was a little bit concerned. And um, to prepare for that EVA, we had to make our own tools. And here is the um, one which Beamer is using. It was taped with Captain to... Uh, so we won't get a little electrical sh shock. And finally, after a lot of work by Beamer, over and over, Ray, it's coming in. Yes. Go on that can. Final success. And uh, the mission was more or less completed, and we could start to have some fun also. Actually, we had fun all the time, but uh, we could uh, enjoy weightlessness, playing with things like frisbees, playing with ourselves. You're <laughs> 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 a cone, you're here, so this must not be the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the famous water experiment, and uh, with a Swedish candy going inside. And uh, that's one way to eat. <laughs> you can feed each other. That's another way to eat. <laughs> or you can make a little frisbee to eat. <laughs> and uh, occasionally we even ate the normal way. <laughs> and we also found uh, ways to eat together. We actually had a couple occasions to eat as an entire crew back in uh, the uh, back of the space station with our space station guests or our uh, hosts, I should say. Eventually, uh, after all this hard work and good fun, it was time to say goodbye. Um, here's a picture of our farewell ceremony. Uh, a couple tearful goodbyes, and it was get ready to close the hatch and perform the undocking. Um, for the undocking, it's just the reverse of a docking. Uh, as I, as I <coughs> and uh, you just make the station get uh, smaller, and... Um, you just uh, fly around. Uh, Krister took a few pictures. Uh, we had actually some, uh, some tasks of uh, pictures as we were flying around, and Krister and Beamer uh, took care of those. Um, and we got a uh, half a lap fly around. So here you see us starting at the, uh, at the front, and we kind of go over the top. And then when we get around to the back side, we did a separation burn to set us up for our uh, next task. Uh, the last thing we had to do was a couple uh, actually three deployables. Um, you see two of them here, and then one going out the side. And some pictures of them. It was kind of neat to see these uh, go out, and we were passing over some pretty neat parts of the Earth. Um, eventually, it was time to come home, and uh, we got the orbiter all set to come back as the uh, spaceship into an airplane that it is. We had uh, Joni and Krister set up to uh, close the payload bay doors, which you see them doing here. They did a marvelous job as they were actually closed, which was important coming in. <laughs> and 
and then uh, we got in our suits and uh, got ready for the uh, entry. Uh, Beamer takes one last opportunity to eat there, as you can see as a theme. And, uh, and then we uh, turn it over to the boss for the final landing. You can see why the pilot doesn't speak much. <laughs> You know, folks were talking about how the mission was over a long time ago, and I had to keep reminding them that there was actually this minor thing called a landing that we had to perform. And uh, after waving off the first rev, we weren't sure we were really going to go, and it was uh, quite a pleasant surprise to find out that we're coming into the Kennedy Space Center. Um, great views from, uh, from the cameras. Uh, you know, the, the shuttle is an amazing vehicle, and it really flies well, just like the training aircraft that we have. I, I was just amazed at how similar it was. So here we are at about a 700 feet, 305 knots, and we're pulling uh, towards the runway, having been in a big dive about a mile and a half short of it. We get the landing gear down, and uh, I just keep telling myself, it's just like a simulator, it's just like a simulator. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> and uh, right at sunset, uh, it was just uh, remarkable to actually fly this thing for the first time, bring it down. Uh, Billy O gets the uh, drag chute out the back end. Uh, the derotation is a, a real eye opener for uh, people that weren't expecting it because it is a bone jarring crunch when the nose gear comes down. But uh, that that machine was the the most uh, marvelous thing. And uh, you know you read a lot of things in the press about it, but uh, it is a phenomenal piece of engineering that uh, did a job that no other vehicle could have done on this mission and uh, did us well for the 13 plus days that we were in orbit and it was a true privilege to get this mission off. 